we're going to go over to Srimati Anjali Didi in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm going to do a little introduction um, for her. And um, she um, she's originally from, I think very fittingly actually, from Lake Pleasant in Arizona. She met the devotees in the year 2000. And there's a very nice story where she tried to evade a monk who was trying to fly her with the Bhagavad Gita. But she said that she made a mistake in reading the book. You probably read the cover first, and then reading the book, and her uh, life has never been the same. Uh, she met Gurude in Honolulu in 2005 and took Parinam then. Um, she's the mother of two, her children are called Naradu and Dayu. And she honors the holy names of Sedona Kirtan yoga, and also goes out with a party with uh, the Iskon party on Sakatan, which I find very nice actually. But anything we can do between the Sundays is fantastic. So she goes out with the Iskon party in Phoenix, I think on a monthly basis. Um, she's got a very interesting story to share with you. And I'm, we've allocated a special 40 minutes, not 30, um, because we want to give um, a chance to uh, to uh, Prima Dutri Dasi to speak as well in conjunction with Anjali Didi. So very warm welcome. Thank you for coming on the program. The floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Yashoranandan yes, Prabhu. We're good on sound? Your sound is perfect. Jai. Uh, so going on time. Namo Vishnu Padaya Radhikaya Priyatmane Sri Simad Bhakti Vedanta Narayani Pinamine Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Sri Simad Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Ganadara Sri Vasadi Gorapakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Short on time, but this is very pertinent. The same song that I learned in 2000, of Holy of 2000, is what I sang twice for the last memory, and I will sing it now. And it is to honor both on this wonderful, wonderful Father's Day. My spiritual father, Niti Lila Om Vishnupa, Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedantas, Narayan Maharaj, and who I call my spiritual grandfather, um, and I grab his pinky toe every time I go to Iskon of Phoenix, my spiritual grandfather, uh, Prabhupada. So saying it probably, pro properly, tongue tied. It doesn't happen often. Sri Sima Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janava Nava Giri Varadari Yashura Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Yashura Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari 
Yamunatiramanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari I heard from my god brother that it is very important to sing this song because it holds everything. Not only it was Prabhupada's favorite, my spiritual father also would close his eyes when he would hear this song and it holds all of the past times. So in this process, Please forgive me up front if I forget any names, but it's only in the mercy of the Vaishnavas that I've been able to get this far. So you already got the idea that in 2000, I met the devotees and yes, it was running away from Bhakta Jeremiah from ISKCON's Ganapati Swami book distribution team. Uh, I thought that $5 was going to make him go away and I could get to sociology class on time. Yeah, about that, it, um, I actually opened the book in sociology class and my life changed ever since. Fast forward to four years later, 2004, I was now a senior in college going to get a very special crossroads when college ended, looking at who I wanted to have as my spiritual master, as my guru. Also noticing that communication skills, I was not that great. And the temple president of ISKCON of Heidelberg at that point said, you know, there is a very good program that you might want to join. It's called the Satvatov Institute. There's going to be a program this summer and I think you're going to want to come to it, but there is going to be people of the other camp. And I'm like, What's the other camp? I hadn't heard such a thing. And I asked him, okay, is there, are they like, do they do drugs? Do they, are, are they evil people? What, what do I need to know beforehand? Should I bring a gun? I mean, what, what is it about this other camp that I need to be worried about? I'm from the West. I'm crass. And I also know how to, how to shoot. Let's be honest. So sure enough, they were like, no, 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 nothing like this, nothing like this, but just needing to let you know that this happens. Okay, I'll still go. And sure enough, when we went to Sapato with Dira Govinda, Marilyn, I ended up meeting the other camp. And it was through the heart of Krishna Mai, Fani Bhushan, that I see as like, these are regular people just like me. What, what is so insane about this? On the drive back to Paris, I got a little bit more of the history that I did not know existed prior to everything. And there is a saying that if you do not know history and you don't get angry or mad or sad, you're not really learning all the history. Sabir Shan Prabhu gave as much as he could and being respectful and he very much was, but I was able to see that after four years of being in the movement, singing in different parts of the world, the exact same Samadhi pictures that showed Prabhupada's Murti had always seen cropped. It was in that summer when I finally saw the expanded picture and that this God nephew by the name of Naraya Maharaj was there and was part of our story all along. I did not know about it. And sure enough, in October of 2004, when it went to the next uh, communication skills group of Sapato, I found out even more. In the process, I asked my, the spiritual master and who is very dear in my heart because he was one of the many that helped me guide to my Gurudev, Jai Pataka Swami. I, he and I, we'd been messaging for years and I asked him directly the same question. I asked him this question. If hotheads and politicians were being allowed inside of the temples, why is it that such a senior godbrother 
the one that actually did the samadhi was not allowed in the temples. Out of the first time in four years where he would, didn't matter where he was in the world, he would answer me. This was the first time he went silent. And his silence to me spoke volumes. He did not criticize, at least not to me. And to this day, I still go to Jayapataka Swami's uh, Pushpanjali and I hold him in my heart. He was even the one that gave Naradi her first grains. In the process though, one thing led to another. Thank you to the Heidelberg devotees. And I found this other temple that was there all along, even closer than the one in Heidelberg to my house. One thing led to another and I was about to graduate. And sure enough, that temple devotee of Germany was able to somewhere or another connect me to Brajanat Maharaj, uh, Brajanat Prabhu. And he asked, well, do you want to see Gurudev? Of course. I want to see Gurudev. 17 hours flight from Germany, LA to Hawaii. I actually was able to do a almost direct flight to meet Gurudev in hiding at that point, to be able to ask him the exact same question. Why is it that Politi politicians politics are allowed in the temples, but you are not. And he answered me. He said, it's because I just say a couple of things that are different. Okay, here's my question to you. I'm going to ask, why is it that in ISKCON, we go and read the ISKCON sandwich, Bhagavad Gita in the morning, and Krishna book at night, if it seems like all of this is all towards Radhika, it's all about Radharani's girlfriend. Why am I reading the Krishna book in the morning and not just Krishna book in the morning and Krishna book at night? Gurudev was so funny. He started laughing. He said, it's because you're not reading it right. Inside of every single verse of the Bhagavad Gita, is Srimati Radhika, where he is talking about her in code. You just haven't read it properly. Read it again. And then when I was about to say, yeah, read it again. It took literally 20 years for Premadatri Mataji of Iskhan of Phoenix to actually get it through in 649 when I got it. And truthfully, I didn't even get that far if it wasn't that for the people there, Rajanat Prabhu, Madhava Maharaj, when I, uh, when I asked him, will you accept me to be your disciple? Here I am expecting that he was gonna say like, and at that point I had heard the stories where he was pretty infamous for come back in three months, come back in six months, one year, two years. And yeah, he says, I will accept you. Come back tomorrow. I'm like, er, what? Tomorrow? Okay. Showed up with a tray of fruits. And sure enough, he goes ahead and looks at the entire tray of fruits that I had bought from Safeway. And I'd even bought some fruits that I had never seen in my life because again, desert girl. There was this one fruit that I purchased, which was a persimmon. Gurudev, out of the entire tray that had a little bit of everything, grabs the persimmon and goes to Madhav Maharaj and goes, what, what's this? You know, it, it's almost like saying, and what is this? If it wasn't, I was holding my breath and thinking, oh my goodness, Gurudev is not going to accept me because I don't know how to pick fruit. But sure enough, he goes ahead and is looking at it and Brajanat Prabhu says, don't worry, it's persimmon, it's good. So at this point, I go and get accepted out of all days Makara Sakranti. I did not know how important that day was until much later. And I only got to see my Guru Dave very few times, unlike so many people in this call that have been able to travel with him, I only had very, very few associations. 
I was able to see him at that same 2005, at that point, Kilo Festival, and I was able to receive this poster here from Shamarani Didi. And it was by the very, very insistent God sisters of hers that she finally signed at the little corner. That painting to me is priceless. That poster to me is priceless. I also found out in that festival to keep myself quiet because when I flew back to Phoenix, the, my dear God sister that was that is a disciple of Radhana Swami had recently gotten excommunicated for allowing my Gurudev to speak at the Uni University of Arizona Bhakti Yoga Club. At that point in time, I was only a couple years away from, I was already the, the uh, ASU Bhakti Yoga Club president. So for her to have been excommunicated and I'm coming back, I knew to keep myself quiet. And I even went to Tucson. And when I saw other senior God members being quiet about it, we all saw each other to see my Gurudev. And we all kept quiet for fear of retribution. So for 15 years living here in the desert, I stayed quiet on who my guru Dave was. I went ahead and um, people would play the who's your guru game because they could see the, the, the threefold necklace. And all I could have is literally Shastra with me. But can't come New Year's of 2020 I'm like that's it I'm looking at the deities I'm like that's it I cannot go another decade without telling everyone and if they throw me out they throw me out if I'm not allowed back in I'm not allowed back in but I am listening during this corona uh, during this time frame I need to go ahead and say it out of my chest so at that point I go to Shama Mohini Mataji she is one of the uh, topmost devotees at the Iskana Phoenix Temple. She speaks Spanish, so um, I, I speak with her. I'm like, Shama Mohini, te tengo que decir algo. I need to tell you something. And by this point, I was disgusting, absolutely disgusting. Um, Sanadi and everything. She's like, what is it? What is it? Oh, my... My spiritual master is Narayan Maharaj. And she's like, okay, but what is it? I'm like, that's it. That's it. My Guru Dev is Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj. And she's like, hold on a second. And she grabs Premadatri and she says in, in front of everyone, it doesn't matter what's happening out there. You hear your family, we are here together and we sing together. And sure enough, I was able to continue and Corona hit. And so here I am listening to Kishori Mohan and Sudevi on their morning classes. And they said something that really struck my heart and something that I saw in that morning at, at Tucson, when we were visiting all in secret. He's like, why can't they say my name? Everyone says Guru Dave. And even in 2004, when, when I was there at the Sapatov Institute, I also got chastised. They say Guru Dave, they don't say my name. And that's at that point, I'm like, Father, I know that I don't know much. I really don't know much. Um, but I do know that you're family too. So I go to Premadatri and I say, okay, you can tell me no. You could have told me no before, but it's in my heart. This is the Vyasa Pooch of my Guru Dev, and it's the centennial. I know that because of COVID reasons, and Phoenix, by the way, has been COVID capital of the world, not once, but twice twice. 
So at that point, we had the entire temple. To this day, it's still on lockdown. We're only open two and a half hours out of the week to protect the Pujaris. And of course, in January, when I'm feeling it so heavy in my heart, I'm like, you can tell me no, but will you allow me to do the Vyasa Puj here in the temple and have the family back together? And I'm like this. And Prima Dati Mataji said, yes. She said, yes. So all of us together, because I was only allowed two invitees, only two invitees, they couldn't show, but it was the most intimate, beautiful party. I wouldn't have had it any other way. All the Pujaris, when they found out that my family homage to a family member was actually my Guru Dave, they all showed up. They even made a cake by themselves. So it was disciples of Radhana Swami, Jayapataka Swami, Premadatri Mataji was their disciple of Gromapad Swami. We all got the family together. And I already think I, I think you've got the pictures, Prabhu, of Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, Prabhupada. And on the wall, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the Show entire the family. Number. I'm sorry? Do you want me to share them at the end? Yes, please, if it's okay. Yeah. That's my alarm telling me to hurry up. So in the process, we were able to share all together. It was gorgeous, but it was also Corona. So we could not be able to have anybody else there. It was a Thursday. We picked up and we headed out. But on the way of heading out, I heard Radhanath Swami give Pushpanjali to my Gurudev, which in process is the exact same almost redemption of my God sister that God excommunicated. And that Sunday, Valentine's Day. Well, first and foremost, everyone that was there, every single Pujari got this book. Because it is the perfect bridge between Prabhupada and Narayan, Narayan Maharaj, both of them. She knows both and she knows their heart and she wrote it well. So on Valentine's Day, which was that Sunday, everyone that went to the temple that day for those two and a half hours, got this, got the Kunjkirtan painting because she is the eyes that helps everyone see a little bit of the glimpse of the world. And sure enough, history is starting to fix itself, I think a bit more because not even a couple of weeks ago, this book came out. And unlike when I was a college senior that I found out in passing and almost what it felt like in secret. My father is back in the history books. It says, Bon Maharaj, Krishna Das Babaji, Ananda Prabhu, and Prabhupada's god nephew, Narayan Maharaj, soon arrived and sat on benches on either side of the bed, observing his consciousness, observing Prabhupada's consciousness. I feel that every single flower that I have that I have talked about, every single person, I am not here by myself. It was God brothers, God sisters, God cousins, everyone that sees Mahaprabhu's vision. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting me be able to speak on Father's Day because it's this is what I think my father wanted. He wanted to be remembered. Narayan Maharaja Ki Jai. Beautiful, and Anjali Dili. Really beautiful. Do you want to go straight into your friend or do you want to go into your photos? Um, up to you, Prima Mataji. Would you prefer to speak now or do you want to show the pictures later? 
Yeah, I think I think if she speaks now, then it will um, it will um, enrich and enliven everything you've said and connected. Okay. That's okay with you. So maybe you introduce her, uh, Angela. <coughs> so Prema Datri Mataji has been the temple president here at ISKCON of Phoenix for many years. She is a doer, not a talker, unlike myself. And definitely, definitely knows how to be able to see the vision and offering from everyone. Please give my give your dandavats, your hearty pranams to the, the mother of Phoenix. Premadatri Mataji. Don't do that, um, please um, unmute yourself. Thank you. Hare Krishna, sorry about that. Hare Krishna, everyone. Um, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri uh, Guru and Gauranga. Um, thank you, Anjali, for the kind words. Um, you exaggerate a little bit, <laughs> but thank you for inviting me. Uh, to join today in the celebration of uh, memories of your Guru Maharaj. And I'd also like to extend my gratitude to Yashoda Nandan Prabhu for giving us the opportunity to speak today and a uh, very special day, Father's Day. So um, very fortunate to, for, you know, uh, very fortunate for Anjali to speak today on Father's Day to make the offering. So, you know, congratulations. And uh, it's a special program. I never met um, His Holiness Narayan um, Goswami Maharaj, but uh, it is so nice to see today that um, all the spiritual sons and daughters come together to remember and pay respects uh, to a spiritual father, the spiritual master, and for many of us uh, to learn a little bit about an inspiring Vaishnava. Uh, this is an example of cooperation. And when we come together, work together for the satisfaction of our spiritual master, everything else is covered. So um, we always uh, should serve for the pleasure of our spiritual master and ultimately Radha Krishna uh, will benefit you know, uh, for all of us. So uh, we, in the mornings we sing uh, Guru Ashtakam and um, the first uh, line of the prayer says, Samsara Davana Davana Samsara Davan Nanalita Loka Tranaya Karunya Ganaganatvam Prapasya Kalyan Gunaravasya Vande Gurushi Chernaravindam. Recently I heard a lecture by um, Shri Prabhupada in regards to these prayers. And uh, he speaks, um, he says that this song is offering obeisances, um, particularly to the spiritual master. And the symptoms of the spiritual master are described in this prayer. The spiritual master has two kinds of symptoms. One uh, kind is called constant and the other kind is called temporary. So the first verse Prabhupada says that the constant symptom of the spiritual master is that he can deliver his disciple from the blazing fire of this material existence. That is the eternal qualification of spiritual master. We should always remember that the spiritual master is in the disciplic succession. The original spiritual master is the supreme personality of Godhead. He blesses his next disciple just like Brahma. Brahma blesses his next disciple just like Narada. Narada blesses his next disciple just like Vyasa. Vyasa blesses his next disciple Madhvacharya. Similarly, the blessing is coming just like royal succession. The throne is inherited by disciplic or hereditary succession. Similarly, this power from the Supreme Personality of Godhead has to receive. And the nature of the, the Lord is that he manifests um, his compassion through his dear most devotees. Therefore, the Guru is the embodiment and reservoir of Lord's mercy. The Guru is the means by which the Lord expresses his love and compassion for the conditioned souls. It is said in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrit Adilila 145, 
that by the mercy of Krishna coming through the Guru, the disciple is delivered. The Guru is the means by which the conditioned soul can become connected to Krishna. Krishna in his original transcendental form is far beyond the reach of the conditioned souls, senses and mind. But in his form as the Guru, he is accessible to the conditioned souls. Nobody can preach, nobody can um, uh, become a spiritual master without obtaining the power from the right source. Srila Prabhupada and His Holiness Naren Goswami Maharaj both received the power and instructions from the spiritual master, Shabhakti uh, Saraswati Thakur, Bhakti Vedanta Saraswati Thakur, and they followed his instructions. Similarly, you can become an instrument for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and your Guru Maharaj in spreading Krishna consciousness. Anjali, it may have taken you 15 years or more to feel comfortable speaking about your Guru Maharaj. But it has been great to see the way you have nicely started to do service and participate in the various programs at the temple. I'm very proud of you. And you already mentioned, you know, uh, give him a, and you have a generous heart, you know, giving all those posters and books to the Pujaris. Um, you are, you know, you have a great, uh, great soul. And as we celebrate um, the 125 years of the appearance of Srila Prabhupada, we at ISKCON Phoenix are offering the best thing we can, our love. And Srila Prabhupada very clearly said that our love for him will be shown by how much we cooperate with each other. So I'm happy that we are coming together to celebrate such exemplary Vaishnavas. And by doing so, Shri Bhakti Siddhant Sarasati Goswami Maharaj is being served and he will be pleased. And by pleasing him, Srimati Radharani will be pleased and ultimately Krishna will be pleased. And I'm also happy to say that uh, Iskana Phoenix will be participating in the World Sankirtan Day next month, July 11th. And you all are welcome to come to uh, Shishi Radha Madhar Haridham in Phoenix whenever you are in our area. And uh, right now we have a small uh, temple in Chandler, but we have outgrown that facility and we are planning to move to Phoenix uh, in the near future where we can serve our congregation more than anything. We can serve our children better uh, having better classroom facilities, library, um, and so forth. We have, you know, our facilities limited at the temple, but uh, it's a beautiful temple. You know, our magnanimous uh, deities uh, keep us going. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak, and I wish you all the very best. Hare Krishna. Please forgive me for any uh, uh, offenses I might have committed to anyone. Thank you for sharing and, and, and teaming up with uh, Anjali on this. I was going to come to Phoenix, but now she says that she, uh, what do you say in America? You pack metal or something? You know, you shoot guns? I'm a little bit worried. It's all right. I got your back, Prabhu. You're good. Oh, you're on my, okay, that's good. You're on my side. Um, let's, um, let's show some, some of those pictures, right? <coughs> so here's, uh, here's where my technology skills come into play. Let's... Um, Let's hope I'm not as useless as normal. One second. Or maybe hope that I am, because it's usually quite amusing. Um, okay. <coughs> oh, whoops. Okay. Um, share screen, share sound, <coughs> and share that. Um, show that okay um you take us andrew you take us through it so you explain the picture and i'll just tell me when to scroll forward okay um so you can be able to see that in this picture i am actually singing act to our glorious strisi radamadavari that is on the opposite side, but behind me, you can actually see the uh, the Vyasa Puja and the Vyasa son of uh, of my father, uh, Narayan Maharaj. And thank you 
Janardhan Prabhu for giving me that picture because I couldn't find online a high quality enough to be able to make that big of a painting to fit the Vyasa sun, funny enough. Right there. So here I am singing the exact same song that you just heard me sing in the beginning because I was so nervous I could only sing Jaya Radha Madhava without choking and sounding like an absolute fool like I am right now. So in the process, funny enough, um, you see me right there with the cartels being able to sing that. Prior to, because I was stumbling so bad, I actually brought my cell phone and was actually, and throughout the hall, the entire temple hall, you could hear um, Gurudev's favorite male devotee singer, Krishna Das Prabhu, singing Gurudev Dayakarke. And it was, and of course, the Pujaris understood it. I did not. I had to continue saying Jai Radha Madhava. Please continue on the next one, whichever it could be. Uh, you can see Prabhupada right there in the corner. I'm trying, um, to, uh, I'm trying to click, but nothing's happening. Oh. It's okay. Garuda is right there at the front guarding us all. Yeah. So here you can see <laughs> devotees, uh, the two gentlemen on the left. Are this temple is at 101 South Weber Drive in Chandler, Arizona, at least for now. Um, and on the left hand side are two devotees of Radhanath Swami. If you go further in, I don't know if you can zoom in on the pictures, on the right hand side is our beloved Divyasham Prabhu going ahead and, and fanning both uh, my Guru Dev. And at the same time, you can see Prabhupada, and he's fanning the chamara to them. Uh, he is a, a devout, devout disciple of, of Jayapataka Swami. And they were all there. Um, and he was, he told me, Narayan okay, Maharaj, good. <laughs> From there, this is where I was trying to sing. Um, and um, Parthasar Prabhu was definitely helping follow along to be able to say Manga Charana and my obeisances to my father. And you can see Sri Sri Radha Mahavarahi right there in the back. So they were able, so the deities were able to take darshan of God nephew, God uncle, and Param, Param Guru Dev. Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, all of them together. That's it. That's it? Oh. Have I missed anything? Um, um, there was some other pictures where it was, where you could see all three of them together. Um, but it's okay. If they want to hide themselves for now, that's okay. Um, okay, beautiful. Um, <clears throat> I realized what you were saying a lot earlier, Anjali, about Gurudev. I mean, one of Gurudev's specialities, which you pointed out implicitly, was that he explained to us always why we do everything. So when you're asking him, you know, why aren't we worshiping Radha, and he explained that to you, it reminds me that actually when I went on the share, you could see I was looking up that article. Vishnu Chakrati Thakur, there's a wonderful, I won't tell the past time because I won't do it justice, but it's really worth looking up uh, where Vishnu Chakrati Thakur is immersing himself in the Karma Gayatri Mantra and he's missing one half syllable. And he finds that one half syllable as basically Radha. And it was only, it was only through his experience of connecting with Radha that he fully was able to absorb himself in that, in that mantra. So you really encapsulate that in your explanation of Shiva Gurudev's guitar, because we shouldn't be thinking about, <clears throat> it's not Radha or Krishna, it's Radha and Krishna, to understand both relationships. Go on, did you? did you want to say something? I'm right there with you, Prabhu. Yeah. We're all one family. Which brings me on to my next point, you're sharing with uh, Premadakli Dasi was beautiful because what that really teaches us, and I think there's a what's happening is there's a mature, 
some more maturity is coming into the Krishna conscious movement where we realize that guru or guru is one and many simultaneously. And there's huge diversity, but there's also um, unity in the Shakti of Lord Nichananda Prabhu. And I know very much in London, for example, I do a lot of ser service with lovely devotees who have Bon Maharaj or Madhav Maharaj as their gurus and Siddhanti Maharaj. And there's no, there's no um, bifurcation or lack of clarity because everybody respects each other's guru. And when one person who's a disciple of one guru celebrates or glorifies another guru or glorifies their own guru, they're actually helping us to nourish our relationship with guru. So we need to see this not as some material competition, but as some beautiful, huge family where we have the diversity of these families across, across oceans and countries, across ethnicity, ethnicities, so many different, so much diversity, but <clears throat> everything can be reconciled through Bhakti no Thakur's um, plea in Bhakti Samaj, where he says that anybody who recognizes Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is either God, um, the greatest devotee of God, or merely just a great personality, he's in our society. It's such a broad vision. And this is where we need to get through as devotees.